Thompson was a UC freshman when she disappeared in 1978. Her body found in Loveland on the bank of the Little Miami River. When Thompson vanished in 1978, she was a first-year student at UC. Cheryl Thompson, a 19-year-old university student from Cincinnati, Ohio, went missing when she left her parents' house to meet her lover at a disco on March 24, 1978, and her body was discovered on the Little Miami River Bank near Loveland the following day. What precisely happened to Cheryl? Did she drown while swimming or did she suffer a much worse fate? Two weeks later, her decomposing body was discovered by the Little Miami River in Ohio. Hi and welcome back to Mysterious Cases 007. If you are new here, please consider subscribing to Mysterious Cases 007 as it helps us motivate to create more intriguing content for you. Let's have a look at the 44-year-old cold case that is finally solved, Cheryl Thompson case. Our exploration for today's day will take us to Cincinnati, which is the third largest city in Ohio and was originally founded as a town in the year 1788, but now has a population of more than 300, 000. Cincinnati is a cultural and commercial hub that is well known for its one-of-a-kind chili that is influenced by the Mediterranean. The city is also home to the oldest baseball team in the United States as well as the seat of the government of Hamilton County. Steven Spielberg, an American film director, writer, and producer, was born and reared in the city. He is also a native of the United States. Cheryl Thompson, together with her parents and brothers Bill and Dan, was brought up in the city of Cincinnati, located in the state of Ohio. Everyone who knew Cheryl described her as an intelligent young woman who was also kind and loved having a good time. She was known to always have a smile on her face, which endeared her to those around her. She had compassion for all living things, including humans and other animals. She was everyone's closest friend, according to Bill Thompson. When Cheryl was 19 and accepted to the University of Cincinnati to study nursing, her older brother told the media that it was a dream come true for her. She always wanted to be a nurse, and since her school was in the same city as her parents' home, she could easily commute between the two locations. It was obvious from a young age that she would work with people. It was simply who she was. Bill had mentioned that Cheryl also had a friend by the name of Laura Bresser. Laura was someone Cheryl felt comfortable sharing her secrets and fears with, and anyone could immediately tell that the two friends had a close bond because they both enjoyed dancing at the disco every weekend. The two would dance together, which would bewilder onlookers, but they were just having fun and were just out there dancing together. Laura claimed that despite her friend's pleadings, Cheryl did not change her mind about going to the disco and that nothing would be able to stop her or change her plans. The last time anyone saw Cheryl alive was when she said goodbye to Dan and left the house at approximately 10, 30 p.m. Cheryl's boyfriend arrived at Gatsby's disco and waited patiently for her until midnight. By this time, he had grown very concerned because Cheryl had still not shown up and many thoughts had been running through his mind. He soon stepped outside to search for her when he looked around. He immediately saw her. Unexpectedly, Cheryl's car was located the day after she vanished. It was located on Box Street, a few blocks from the disco. After the car was located, Police started knocking on doors to see if anyone had seen anything that could aid them in their investigation. A description of her was also made public with the hope that someone might have seen her. However, to no avail, it appeared as though Cheryl had disappeared from the face of the earth. Days later, Cheryl's car was found. When he moved closer, he saw that it was a dead woman's decaying body that was entangled in the plants down an embankment. He was horrified by this and immediately went back to his car and notified the Hamilton County Sheriff's deputies. Within minutes, officers arrived at the scene and secured the area. A closer look at the body reveals that the woman, who appeared to be in her early 20s, was particularly clothed and was lying about 20 feet away from the river. She still had on shoes, socks, and jewelry, but her undergarment looked like it had been tampered with. There were also bruises on her neck. Since detectives had no leads, the case quickly went cold. Dan had said at the time of Cheryl's death, someone who just doesn't know where his head is at. Years passed, and Cheryl's family and friends endured the pain that her death brought them. Her parents passed away without ever learning who had brutally murdered their daughter, but her brothers Bill and Dan held out hope that their sister's murder would one day be solved. 
In 2010, detectives from the Loveland Police Department and O. In 2022, detectives sent semen from Cheryl's rape kit to a third-party genealogy company. The company used genetic genealogy, which uses DNA to determine relationships between people. The results identified a family tree. Three people were singled out from the family, and they were a brother, cousin, and uncle. All three were located by the authorities, and they were able to provide the information needed to solve the case. With this information, detectives had a new lead, so they decided to exhume Ralph's body, which was buried at the Rest Haven Memorial Park in Evandale. Once at the burial site, Ralph's body was exhumed, and his jawbone was removed and sent for forensic analysis. All that was left to do was wait for the test results. When they were finally released, the information was exactly what detectives had hoped for because the DNA extracted from Ralph's jawbone matched the one that had according to reports. Ralph attempted but failed to kidnap a woman in 1983, just five years after Cheryl's death. He reportedly stopped the woman by the side of the road and offered her a ride home in his newspaper delivery truck. The woman had initially been raped. Ralph apparently worked as a newspaper delivery man for a newspaper company known as the Cincinnati Inquirer before his death. As soon as Ralph told her he wanted to have sex with her, he wrapped a rope around her neck and started to choke her. She resisted, and after much battling, he eventually stopped the truck and let her free. In addition to the fact that Ralph was eventually apprehended and pleaded guilty to a lesser charge of unlawful restraint, detectives suspect that Ralph may also be to blame for the deaths of three other women who all passed away between 1976 and 1978. It is unclear if Ralph served any time in prison for the crime. These included Charmaine Stala, 17, who was one of them. The Loveland Police Department and BCI should be commended for their tireless efforts. They never gave up looking for Cheryl Thompson's killer. And now, more than 40 years later, her family has closure. Nancy and Theobald, 18, and Victoria Hincher, 24, were also found raped and strangled, just like Cheryl, but unlike Cheryl's case, no DNA evidence was obtained from the three murders. Even though Ralph was dead, detectives met with Cheryl's family and informed them that they could present the evidence to the jury if they wanted further closure. Joseph Dieters, who works as a prosecutor in Hamilton County, said that he has prosecuted several serial killers in his career as a prosecutor and our office definitely feels that he is another. On November 17, 2022, the family voted unanimously to support this. The indictment against Ralph provided Cheryl's family and friends with a sense of finality over the incident, despite the fact that there would be no trial. Even though Bill had stated that it didn't really matter whether he was dead or not, it helped put the matter to rest knowing that someone had been charged with her sister's murder. Knowing that someone had been charged helped put the matter to rest. The fact that Laura's friend's murder had finally been solved made her glad as well. She was a truly lovely person and didn't deserve something like that. Laura's buddy had been murdered. Laura conveyed her appreciation to the law enforcement officials by saying, I truly am grateful thank you guys finally that you got him. She went on to say that it was a tragedy that Cheryl was unable to live out the rest of her life because of what had happened to her because she had her whole life ahead of her. Do you believe Cheryl would be alive today if she had listened to Laura's appeal and not gone to the disco? Share your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Many young women have met a similar death, and regrettably, many of their killers are still at large.